Hi everyone. In this clip, I want to start blocking in some more thumbnail drawings and design experimentation. So for example, I want to just start using big brush strokes and things like that to kind of block in different structures that I like seeing on these kind of sword things. <laughs> Basically, just trying to think about what different kind of handle shapes I could have, how far I could potentially go with some of these elements, what works well together, and what doesn't. Remembering some of the design language, of course, of the rest of our image is what we want to work with. The rest of our world for swords and shovels. Let's just pull this down as well. Just fill in the rest of this with white. There we go. And here too, just start kind of blocking in those different elements. A lot just trying to see from far away what works and what doesn't. Pulling off different elements here, just kind of blocking it in, just trying to be comfortable and figure out these different sorts of structures. Maybe trying a long piece here. Let's start to pull that out. I want to figure out like what the variations are that I can get. Do I want either a blade kind of piece here? Maybe it's like slightly polearm like. Because I mean there's the possibility that maybe this design mostly exists as a, a semi sword where it will definitely look like a blade but actually have more of the structure of like a pole arm where it's a lot longer or where just the handle is really long so maybe only in here the section like right around here is like where the hilt would be we could extend out that little connection section here where usually there's a piece of wood or something like that or where the handle of this technically goes in to the actual shovel section itself to give it some structure maybe we don't do that too much in there. So again, maybe we can play with some stuff in here. Maybe there's a little extra uh, metal connection in this. Maybe it's soft like the rest of this. So the hand would just technically hold here and there'd be this long back section to it. Now we could start to experiment with that on a character concept to see how that would look. But for now, let's just kind of keep playing with these different shapes here and see what ends up being interesting. At this point, I'm kind of just moving around different shapes, seeing what works, seeing like if I had a couple tassels coming off of this, that actually really starts to make it look like a pole arm to me. So I'm actually going to remove that because uh, pole arm concepts that I've seen usually have like this long tattered frayed thing and it becomes more like a flag, which is a great image, but I don't think appropriate for this. Let's just take that part. I'm going to duplicate that as well here and just change the proportions of this just a little bit start to pull this in and extend out that blade section just to get a sense of this that starts to actually look pretty interesting on its own but again I don't want to get too caught up in that I just want to start moving through a lot of pieces here because that'll start to give me a good sense of what I'm working with whether there's something that's more interesting or not uh, things that would be interesting to try out as well is you know, what if this was a sort of a fencing kind of weapon? Maybe it, it has a few more of those uh, rapier kind of choices to it. I'm also just doing this at a different angle than normal just to kind of change my brain up, make my brain think of different sorts of shapes uh, that I would not necessarily think of in this case as I continue to try to work through these. I've done lots of these before I've actually come to doing this course because when it comes to building out totally non-existent object, such as a shovel sword, you want to make sure that you're experimenting with all the different kinds of possibilities, seeing which ones work, which ones don't, and really trying to play in that possibility space so that you are really figuring out what the interesting choices are that you can make there and what the uninteresting ones are, like this one. This one's not really working. I'm just going to pull this out some more, though, again. When you start to run out of space, when it comes to uh, Photoshop and things like that, just give yourself more. Uh, there's no reason to kind of stop and belabor an idea too much and start to like really refine it past the point that it needs to be refined. Even just pulling out some points here a lot more, maybe trying to figure out if there's an interesting kind of hilt design that you can come up with. Again, as you just start to get into it a lot more, things start to get a little bit more free and you can start to figure out different kinds of design elements that may be more interesting than others. And again, with Photoshop at the very least, if I start taking up too much space with a design and I don't really want to do that, then I can just scale it down. Again, I'll do the same thing for this piece. 
Just grab all that, scale it down. Because I don't need to get uh, too caught up in an idea that I'm not really going anywhere with. Uh, let's see here. I do want that blade. I do want there to be something interesting here. But again, if I go too far with that hilt, it tends to feel like it changes the design of this into not being uh, an actual sword, or, or rather a shovel. It tends to end up being something that's just a little bit too far outside of that. Uh, it, it starts to look a little bit like a specifically non-existent object. Like it's not fitting any of the requirements of both pieces. So that's fine. But let's start to play with a few things here. So one, I want to grab an actual image of one of the characters here to see how the position of the hand holding might work in this situation. So I've got here a concept of one of our main characters. So I'm just going to marquee select him, control C, and control V into my scene here. I'm going to scale that down a little bit. I don't need it to be big. I just want to get a sense of what the shape might be. So I'm going to grab one of these pieces here. Uh, let's, uh, let's grab the really long handled version and see how that looks in practice because it's going to tell us a lot about what the structure of this is. I'm going to do uh, control shift C which is going to copy our entire image and everything below. I'm going to paste that and rotate it into position like this. Let's scale that up a little bit, maybe up a little bit more here. Let's do something like that. I'm going to lower the opacity just a little bit and start to erase what I don't need because I do want this to kind of sit over top of what I'm doing here. So that's pretty good. Let's erase the rest here. The whole purpose of this is just to get a sense of what kind of proportions are actually interesting here for a guy to hold if he was in game. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty interesting. So in this case, for example, as I'm seeing this guy holding it, that long section there, pretty interesting. I could stick with that. I could tend to pull it in a little bit more if I wanted to go with something a little bit more conservative. But there is something interesting to having that longer blade, or that longer uh, handle, rather. But maybe I want to go with something a little bit bigger. So again, in this case, I'm just going to use a, a bit more of a heavy-handed brush just to kind of block in some of these big basic elements here. So that's pretty interesting. If I've got sort of a, a flat edged bottom part there rather than some of the uh, the triangle pieces. So that's pretty neat. I could start to play with the shape in here a little bit more and maybe clarify some of the pieces in here. But there's only so far that I can go when I'm starting to block in stuff like this. And as I start to refine, I can go through this process where I'm thinking about the shapes that I'm working with in here from a two-dimensional perspective. Or I could start drawing in perspective like this. But then I've got to refine some of the angles here to get this curvature right. What I'd actually rather do in this case is go back into 3D and start to refine the concept in a much more structural way. Something that's going to give me a lot of give. The main things I know that I can work with are the handle shape, the triangle element at the bottom, or just the handle itself, and the blade length. But I could start to experiment with those in 3D, which is what I'm going to do in the next module. But first, let's summarize what we've learned so far. What we learned in this module was how to gather reference, how we can compare and contrast different shapes of our sword and our shovel, and how to work through some of these design iterations. And finally, checking that weapon design on our intended character to make sure that everything looks the way that we want and is going to work well in this space.